I'm gonna, we're gonna, you know, can you do some stuff with Russian time? I'm gonna come back to the duck under. And we're gonna make it really simple. We're gonna go duck under claw into a bulldog choke. And then we're gonna switch gears again and go to the underhook, to the half house salto, and really tear a lot of stuff up with that. Okay, we're getting some head scissors and things like that into uh, a lot of fun stuff. But, um, <coughs> again, starting with the duck under, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do it slow to start off. and. Uh, the easiest way to do it would be this way, so you can get a good look at it. Because I'm going to come around, and if you guys, does everybody know a bulldog choke? It's basically a clock choke, no gi, but there's differences in it. The clock choke with the gi, you're taught to break down the shoulder, walk around, you can modify the grips. You don't have to do that so much without the gi. If you use your hips past their shoulders, I'm going to show you what I mean. So just, just tap them if you have it. So we're here, we're tied up, we got a collar and elbow. I don't want to be here. Why? It's a neutral position. I don't want to be in a neutral tie-up ever. So we're locked up here. I'm with Dave. He's bullying me around. He's pushing me. I can't get rid of this grip. He's just kicking my butt. I'm like, I gotta do something, man. Okay? When I push in, I'm gonna go super slow on this skin. Notice I'm leading with this foot. I know where I'm going, and I'm not gonna cross my feet. So this foot's ready to go. I start pressuring in here as I push in. When he pushes back, that elbow comes out here. And if I do that slow, we were talking about this down here. Let me come back just a little bit. When I come through, guys, notice I'm, I'm looking down a little bit, but my head, my back is straight, right? As long as your back is straight and you're not looking straight down at the mat, you're in decent position. I'm here. And I'm grinding up through. It stays. It stays, it stays, it stays. As I come around, I'm still cutting, cutting, cutting. And I drop to get them down. Okay? Now, this is when we're setting things up. So it turns a little bit there. Perfect. Now, the bulldog choke itself, I need a reaction. Okay, we can turn into a cross face crank and things like that, but specifically the submission. When I come in, I don't want to get Dave's attention. I don't want him to put that head up. And this is a great way to do this. I've had, I've had pretty good success with this in classes and, and almost really high level friends where I'll come in like this, I still sit there on that hip pride because I need to know because he's an athletic guy. He's still <coughs> active, he's young, he's fighting a lot, he's training his butt off. So I know he's, he's not just going to sit here. So I'm sitting there with that pride, but I'm going to do three little pulls here. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna aggravate him a little bit. Then I'm gonna pull again, I might even walk in a circle. You see his head start to come up? It's just a natural reaction, he hates my hand being there. So when that happens, I'm gonna release and start bringing this hand up over the top. Kind of sneaky, sneaky, right? When I pull this hand out, it replaces, it comes from the temple right there. I don't have to get deep on this, guys, because this is a gag. I don't want a blood choke. That means my cutting bone is going straight across his trachea. When I lock this, it's going to be an S grip, not out here where I'm weak, but here where I'm strong. So tap when you feel it. My hips must pass his shoulder. Look at this. His, found, his base on his arm, one of his posts is right here. If I sit on his shoulder, he's a big guy. If I just sit on his shoulder, you don't feel anything, do you? And then I got to muscle it up and you got crap. Okay, nobody's going to tap to that. I got this, but notice if the, if the cutting bone is in, I can't be turning this way. I gotta keep that even to make sure that this elbow's cranking back. You feel that a little more, right? Mm -hmm. Almost like a short choke or a gag from the from a rear and a rear mount. So when I keep that, watch how I sit up. My butt does not hit the ground. My body weight does the job. So elbow tight to my body, I sit up past and then I pull up. But my arm stays straight, right? This arm stays straight because I want the cutting bone to go straight up through the throat while my body weight sinks down through his head. So that's an easy kill there. We're gonna do two quick things here. Pretty simple stuff, and, and we did the takedown. I do want you guys to do the takedown again, because it's not a high impact takedown, and I want you to get good at it. It's a quick thing, get to the ground, get your position, and get here, and work that claw. You're pretty safe here, okay? I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm pulling, I'm getting his attention. They don't like it, I'm pulling, and that head's gonna start, I feel like that, because it starts breaking my grip. He's not doing anything wrong. We don't train against the wrong reaction. We're not waiting for a mistake. We're forcing reactions and causing entanglements. So I start bringing this hand up, look at my hand slip. When that comes off, the threat's gone, and that's all I want. The shorter, the better. <coughs> if I can get it right there, that's even better. Because now that cutting bone is right there. S grip quickly, and it's time to move you, okay? I go past the shoulder with my hips. Butt is off the ground. And then if I sink my hips, how much did I move? That's what it should be, right? If it takes more than that, and the adrenaline's going on them, they're not gonna tap. Okay, you wanna be able to put them out in a few seconds. So that's one, does everybody understand that? 
Okay? The second one I want to look at is getting into the hammer lock from there. This, this is something I actually picked up from Billy once because I asked him about it. And uh, it was funny because you'd ask him a question, right, Jake? Where's he at? So I would ask him a question, and then he would call my old friend John Potenza. I'd be like, John! Because then John would be screwed and have to do it with me. Right? He'd be like, crap, what did you ask him? <laughs> right? And he'd come over, and this is one of the things we did together. And I said, okay, I said, can I, I bet I can get into a hammer lock here. I think I can. Because if I'm here, come back down a little bit, and I'm digging, and maybe he doesn't, he doesn't raise his head up, but he starts picking at my hand with that right, with the right hand. That's it. That's good. That's a good thing. So my right hand's not going to be able to get his wrist, but my left hand can swing around real quick. So I'm pulling. I'm getting attention. I let him take my hand off. When it comes down towards the mat, this hand comes under and secures that. You see? Now I double up. My cutting bone turns. You see that? The cutting bone is literally going into the side of the tricep, but if I don't rotate full circle and press here, Dave's going to roll right out of this like it's nothing. Okay, so I'm going to try and, let's keep this angle here. Okay. There we go. Everybody see? So when I cut, this is tough. Get, guys, get them coming in a little bit. I don't want you to miss this. And we're going to look at this, maybe, if we'll get into some breakdowns, it's hammer locks. I do a lot of hammer lock stuff. He's not just going to give me this. So a lot of times you'll see videos where the guy's like, I just pull the hand right on out, and I, you're not getting it. It doesn't work like that. So what I do is when I get here, I turn this cutting bone like that. You see that? And that hurts like a son of a gun. When I turn that cutting bone, I'm not on my knees. I'm pressuring into Dave's shoulder. Now there's pressure, right, Dave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I keep rotating and twisting down. I didn't have to pull it out. And he's tapping. Okay? Now if it does come out, let's say it pops. Then I go back to my double grip, rotate the whole way around. It's not the same as a double wrist lock. I pull in and then drive up. You understand? Double wrist lock does what? It comes here and then rotates outward if it's done properly. Thumb in the armpit now. So a little different. Can you guys see okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, please move wherever you need to do so you can see it. So we go bulldog, but if we don't get the reaction, we gotta be ready to hit the next thing. It's all progressive chain wrestling for a reason. Because everybody's gonna react differently, but there's only so many reactions the human body can do from a position, right? So I'm down here, Dave's smart. He knows, maybe we're rolling together, we're training together, he's like, I know what you're doing, you son of a gun. So I'm there, he pulls that hand off. I'm gonna pin his arm down. I'm pushing his arm down to the mat here. Okay? I'm trying to get some weight on. This hand comes over, and I'm gonna grab it. But he's not just gonna give that to me. Let's turn this for a second. See that, you see that, guys? He's not just gonna lift, he's a big guy. And this is not a strength battle from here. I'm not gonna get up and try and deadlift him. I'm on my knees, so you guys can see here. But I'm gonna take this fist and insert it here. So now the cutting, you felt that right away, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. Because the cutting bone is your best friend for creating pain. Now, I can start turning, I drive my shoulder in, and just rotate, you'll get it here. If his hand pops out, I go a little further, double up, pull it in, and then pull it away. Okay? Take every centimeter out of your submission. All the slack disappears. Every submission has an extension, but you have to get rid of every centimeter first. So the extension is like this. Otherwise, you've got nothing to break. Because if you're pulling something three inches to get a tap, you ain't gonna break crap. You may get a submission, but when it comes to actually doing real damage, you ain't got it. Does that make sense? We gotta get that one inch submission. So real quick, we'll go over it again. Let's turn this way. So, yeah. Appreciate it, brother. So we just did the takedown. We were collar and elbow. I pushed in. Daisy's bullying the crap out of me. I gotta get out of this neutral tie. I push it on that elbow. I'm pushing into him to get the reaction. When he pushes in, that elbow flares. My head glide, grides through, and I'm dropping my weight as I'm turning. I'm doing a 180. Coming back the other way, right? So I'm turning. I'm going to start this way, and I'm going to end this way. When I land, that collar tie goes from here, a little bit lower, towards the center, right along the spine, okay, the neck. I go down to my hip prime. Face out, I'm pulling, I'm pulling. This one, I'm gonna get the tension, I'm pulling. Don't grab this, not I'm pulling. He, he pulls that, that's head start coming up. It's a natural reaction. He's not making a mistake, necessarily. When he does it, I'm sneaking the hand. Because I feel my hand sliding, I better get control here. Sliding right there, that's it. You don't have to come all the way across hoping for some blood choke. You're probably gonna get shut down by a high level guy, but right here is fine. Actually, that's even better. S grip. 
And if you ever notice on an edge grip, the outside hand is always palm up. Look, right there. Elbow tight. I'm weak here. I'm strong here. I got to pass Dave's shoulders. So when I sit out, it's here. As I let my body weight sink, I'm not on the floor. I turn my cutting bone. Okay, I'm done. Okay? That's one. Pretty easy, guys? Yes, sir. If it's not, let me know, please, because we'll do one at a time. So please be honest. We got all day. Okay? <clears throat> Second one, the hammer lock setup. And again, this is all about putting pressure on his shoulder. I always tell guys, you've got to control the shoulders or the hips. And it's very hard to control both unless you have a good ride on a certain mount or rear mount. And even then, it's difficult. I still, I'm always, the shoulders take priority. I really believe that because you can wreak a lot more havoc there. And when you're controlling the hips anyways, you're usually controlling the legs to do so. So I'm here, this time, same position, I'm here. But Dave ain't having it. He's pulling that hand, he's strong. He starts digging that hand off. I let him, then I push his hand on the ground. I'm putting all my weight, I'm on my knees trying to be nice, but I'm putting my weight down on his arm. This hand is now free. I come under, but the pressure is coming on. I turn that cutting bone right there. So my thumb is up on that hand. Okay, so now I have a two-on-one. I don't want to go one-on-one -on -one with him against his arm. My shoulder goes into his shoulder blade. And now, even without leaving losing this position, I just crank up and drive in until it comes out or we get a tap there. If it comes out, I got to go a little further around. I'm not going to let him roll. I pull up first. Compromise. Can I, nobody can see that, can they? Get up and move. <laughs> Dave and I are doing break dance and I've been trying. <laughs> you okay, brother? Yeah, I'm good, man. Okay, because I have to come off my knees a little yeah, bit to, to put the weight, okay? So brace yourself a little bit. When we talk about compromising, he's strong. I have to take away every, all the strength in his elbow, all the strength in his shoulder to eliminate all that space. So I pull this way. Then I pull away. You understand? But if I take the pressure off, look. I don't want to deal with that. Pressure is the name of the game of what we do. That's why catch is offensive in nature. But without pressure, you cannot be offensive. Okay, guys? You got it? Yes, sir. So I want you to do three for three. That means you're going to do six reps. Three bulldogs, three hammer locks. Your partner does three bulldogs, three hammer locks. So three for three of each technique. Does that make sense? So you'll do six total reps. Your partner does six total reps. So you're building a sequence. You're memorizing a sequence, that muscle memory. Okay? Let's go. And then we'll get really funky on some stuff. One, two, three.